Back to Global Business Europe. The cost of shipping goods from China to Europe has rocketed in recent weeks, in some cases by 600%. The pandemic has disrupted the balance of trade routes, meaning there's a serious shortage of shipping containers in Asia. Well, our reporter Jemima Walker has been following the story in our London newsroom. Jemima, what impact is this having on businesses? Well, this shipping crisis is already having a huge impact on businesses in Europe and in China. And they're having to make some really difficult decisions about how to shoulder these extortionate costs. The companies that are probably going to be at least affected are electronics companies who ship things like phones. If you think of the size of your phone, it's small, it's very expensive, you can fit a lot of them in a shipping container. It sees companies that ship bigger, relatively inexpensive goods like washing machines or your toys that are really going to struggle and those are the companies that are going to find it very, very hard to retain any profit. Let's watch my report. Made in China is a commonplace label on goods in Europe. And that means they have to be shipped from China. Which, with skyrocketing prices, is becoming almost impossible for some companies. About 60 to 70 percent of all toys are made uh, in China. The Entertainer is Britain's biggest independent toy retailer. It has 172 shops in the UK and 40 in Spain. Even a company this size simply cannot absorb the higher costs. It means they will inevitably be passed on to the consumer. One of our very large teddy bears that retails for £40 would probably end up, because of the new freight rate, nearly double. So we're going to have to just discontinue very large items that have a very uh, large cube. So it will have an impact on, one, the range, and it will have an impact on our retail pricing. Pre-pandemic, it cost around $2,000 to ship a container from China to Europe. Now, European lockdowns are causing congestion at ports, so containers can't be returned quickly enough. Rising demand for Chinese goods means there's now a container shortage, pushing prices up to around $14,000. Edge Worldwide Logistics is a UK freight forwarder. Ultimately, we've got to a point now where lots of people are stopping shipping products. So now it's completely flipped round and you're seeing a huge backlog of orders building up in Chinese warehouses. It's not just China, it's Southeast Asia as well, but in Chinese warehouses particularly because people said, well, I can't afford to pay an extra $10,000. It's more than the margin I've got to move these goods. In the UK, companies are facing added pressures relating to Brexit. If Brexit works out fine and there are no major congestions in the ports, everything will work as normal. If Brexit turns into causing port congestions in major ports in the UK, as a major container line, the backup plan would be, well, just skip the UK port. It will then create problems for the UK importers and exporters. But from a major container line of perspective, the UK is one, just one small piece of the larger picture. While some companies might look to get around the increased shipping costs by sourcing products closer to home, for most that's an unrealistic prospect. In the end, China is the largest supplier of toys to the world. Um, they're capable of the very high volumes. They're capable of consistently very high quality, which is really important for toy safety standards. Um, and uh, it's a country that understands the toy market well. It's hoped that Chinese New Year in February, when there's a lull in factory production, will see shipping prices fall. But there will still be a long way to go for equilibrium to be restored. So Chinese New Year could provide some relief and push prices down a bit, but this is a problem which is likely to persist for some months because a lot of Europe is still knocked down, people are stuck in their houses, and when people are stuck in their houses, they want to shop online. So this increased demand for Chinese goods is likely to go on. But then if you look forward for a few months, we could have the opposite problem. When the world unlocks, People are going to want to go on holiday. They're not going to want goods. They're going to want services. So if you imagine this demand for Chinese goods like a wave, at the moment we are at the peak of that wave, but what we could see in a few months is a crash. Back to you.